but let's cover another riveting topic in real estate. This one has to do with deposits on a contract. How does it work? Usually works one of two ways. You can either submit a deposit when you actually submit the offer, or you can have it upon acceptance. So if they accept your offer, what does that look like? Well, in the standard contract, it says it has to be given to the selling brokerage within 24 hours of acceptance of the offer. If you're late on that, they can actually try and squeeze you out of the deal. I've heard in Toronto when they hear another buyer's lined up, they often try to do that. It doesn't necessarily happen as much in our market, but it's something to be aware of. Now, once the brokerage receives that deposit, they've got five business days to get it into their trust account. The trust account is where the deposit is held while the buyers are fulfilling conditions so that it is protected typically they're non-interest bearing. Deposits work in a lot of different ways. You can put some stipulations in the schedule A of your contract. So if you have any specific questions, hit us up in the DMs. Thank you for watching. We love you guys. Okay guys, so we are 200 episodes of season one right here. So my first all your attention interaction questions you need to just go in here awesome thing to see and we're so happy to be part of it. Now we're gonna be giving you guys 200 episodes of uh, content. We're gonna ask you guys for something. If you go on Instagram and you go to our profile, hit the link, you're gonna see our brand new YouTube channel. We are taking this bad boy to the next level. If you're on Facebook or Twitter, hit the link below and hit the subscribe button. That's it, that's all we're asking you to do. We have some awesome content coming down the pipeline, exciting stuff, not all real estate focused. We're gonna cover the gamut. So join the channel, interact with us. We're really, really excited and thank you so much for being part of this community up until now. Rogan Conical, real estate brokerage, why buy your houses anywhere else? So some massive changes coming in the mortgage industry and Ottawa dropped a bombshell today. And that was that people that are putting 20% down on a house are gonna have to qualify at a higher rate than they did previously. What does that mean for you guys, the consumer? It means the same house you qualify for today, as of January, you're gonna have to earn 20% more income to qualify for that same house. You know, if you've been watching our series, we've been predicting the mortgage rates are gonna to continue to climb. They're now saying they're gonna be up to about the 5% range if things go the way that they're going. But this is the biggest change we've seen in the mortgage industry in a number of years. And Kind of scary. Uh, I know some of the banks are concerned that this is going to push consumers to go to tertiary or secondary lenders and unsecured lenders, which who knows what that's going to do. And they also don't know how it's going to affect credit unions uh, who are governed provincially versus federally. It is massive news. If you have any questions, give us a show. We'll hook you up with a mortgage person that can definitely guide you. And we'll keep an eye on the story for you guys. So real estate's a funny business. One of the only industries where you'll actually spend time, money, going and pitching for new business, not necessarily getting it. And we had an audience member ask us, how does it feel when you don't land that contract? Or how do real estate agents react when somebody you know, has been pitching them for business and then all of a sudden goes and does a deal with somebody else? And we never really talk about ourselves on the Closers Daily. Really, it's about you guys. We don't really like to pitch our business or anything, but I do want to answer the question from our audience member. To be honest with you, I don't even really give it a second thought. And the reason that I say that is there's no sense dwelling on something when you don't know what the outcome is going to be. The second thing I feel is I feel bad for them. And the reason I say that is I know the level at which we do our business. And I always feel like I could have done a better job or cut them a better deal, whatever it's going to be. But at the same time, I always keep the door open and I still give people respect because I don't know what's happening in their personal life. I don't know what led to it. All right, so the weather has been so beautiful, I'm feeling extra generous, so I'm gonna give you guys a negotiation tip on how to keep your emotions in check when the transaction is getting hectic. So one strategy you can use is when you identify that perfect property, write down the big ticket items that matter to you, the price, the conditions, the chattels, or the things that you want in that property, put it in a note somewhere, then establish your strategy. How are you gonna approach it? Are you gonna give them an offer they can accept the first time around? Are you gonna try and negotiate? You know, do you expect it to go back and forth two or three days? Well, if you're doing the latter of those and it's day two and another buyer comes in, people can tend to get emotional. We're human beings, we wanna win and people can kind of get off base and off strategy when they feel they're competing with somebody else. Go back to your notes, go back to your actual strategy and stick to it. I've